Hi everyone, this video is part of Macquarie University's coding tutorials, and in this video we'll be setting up and practicing using JUnit and VS Code using the same sum array function from the previous video. If you're planning on just using VS Code throughout the series and have skipped the previous video where we discussed JUnit and Eclipse, we highly recommend that you pause here and watch that video as we covered some information that will help you understand what is going on in the background. Now, to begin, we'll start by making sure we have everything set up to run our tests. Then I'll take the test and the function we wrote from the previous video and paste it here so we can get straight to running the test and looking at the failure trace. First, we need to make sure we have the extension pack for Java installed. We did this in our previous VS Code installation video, but let's just double check we have it installed. First, open the extension bar in VS Code by clicking on the extensions button on the left sidebar or by pressing Ctrl or Command, Shift and X. If you do not see extension pack for Java under the installed section, type it into the search bar looking for the one published by Microsoft and click on install. Now that we've confirmed that the extension pack for Java is installed, we can see that it includes an extension called test runner for Java. This extension allows us to run our JUnit tests directly in VS Code. Like we did in Eclipse, we first need to create a project where we'll put all our code in. Press Command or Control, Shift and P, or we'll go to the View section at the top and click on Command Palette. Now search for and select Java Create Java Project, select No Build Tools, and select where to save the project. In this case, I will save it to my desktop. Now it asks us to choose a name. Let's go with Debugging Practice VS Code. And our project pops up. Notice our project has a slightly different structure compared to what we saw when working in Eclipse, but we still have an SRC folder. If we go into our SRC folder, we can see there already is an app.java file. We could use the template it provides us, but since we're not creating a main function in our class, we might as well delete it and create our own class. Now, let's right click on the SRC folder and select new file. Let's call it test some array. And before we finish, we need to add the .java extension so VS Code knows that this is a Java source code file. Now, just like in Eclipse, we need to add the two imports at the top of the file so that we can use JUnit. As a refresher, these are import org.junit.test to be able to use the test annotation and import static org.junit.assert.star to be able to use assertions. However, we have read underlines. This shows us that there is an error. Much like how we had to add JUnit to the project's build path in Eclipse, we have to do something similar here. Let's press the chemistry beaker icon on the left side this icon is called the testing menu. Here we want to press on the enable Java test option. Then the option we want is JUnit. This will automatically add the appropriate testing libraries to a project. If we go back to the files icon, the first option on the left bar, we return to our workspace and we can see our project has two new files in the lib folder. These are the testing libraries. If we go back to our class, notice that we now have yellow underlines. If you remember from our video on errors and warnings, this is just a warning. And if we hover over the underlined error, it's just saying that we haven't used the libraries. So let's move on to the tests. Let's copy our tests we made in our Eclipse project since the syntax and logic remains the same regardless of our environment. Just as a refresher, we always use the test annotation for every test function and our test functions are always void. By creating an input variable, expected output variable, and an actual output variable in each function, it's easy to copy and paste our test functions and just change the inputs and expected outputs for more comprehensive testing. Again, feel free to pause the video and create more comprehensive tests. Now let's copy our sum array function code that we made before. To simulate the testing from our last video, let's make sure to start the index from one so that our tests fail and we can go through the failure trace in VS Code. If you need a refresher on how we made this function, feel free to pause this video and rewatch the section from our last video. Now let's run our tests. In the left bar of the source code file, we see some green triangles. If we want to run a test individually, we can select the corresponding green triangle. In this case, we want to run all tests, so we select the overlapping triangles icon. Alternatively, we can open the testing menu and be able to run our tests from here. Here we straight away see that the first test has failed, with the expected and actual output and the failure trace just below it. As an aside, Notice the three and the first zero of the expected output are highlighted in a different shade. This is to indicate they are different digits to our actual output. In this case, it's not as useful to us since it's better to know the actual value difference between the two numbers, not just which digits are different. However, this can become very useful when dealing with string outputs. 
just as we spoke about in the last video, we can see that our actual output is 10 less than our expected output, indicating we're missing the first item in the array. Let's fix our sum array function so that we start at index 0 and then rerun the test. Noticing that when we rerun, we want to press the cross symbol that is now in place of the green triangles. And there we go, no fairly trace pops up and all our tests have green ticks. And that's it, you should now feel a bit more confident creating projects and running tests in VS Code. Between Eclipse and VS Code, it is mostly a matter of preference, but we recommend you try practicing with both and decide which you prefer to use. Some things to remember from this video is that when we create a project in VS Code, we need to select the Flask icon on the left bar to be able to add the appropriate JNet libraries to our project. It's also important that we include the import lines for test and assertion at the top of our files that include tests. Another thing to remember is that our tests always start with a test annotation and avoid functions. To run our test, we simply press on the green triangle or the overlapping green triangles to run all of them. And if we want to rerun the test, we press the red cross or green tick icons that have replaced the triangles. In the next two videos, we'll take a look at how to import existing projects into Eclipse and VS Code. See you there.